From our studio in Weed, California, this is Inside Siskiyou. Real news, real people, real close. With anchor Shereen Strauss, Sheriff Jeremiah LaRue, and Siskiyou Reviews with Becca Raul. Hello, Siskiyou County. I'm Sheriff Jeremiah LaRue. On Tuesday, May 4th, 2021, the Board of Supervisors approved two urgency ordinances designed to protect and preserve our groundwater and restrict the main source of the proliferation of illegal commercial cannabis. This is to assist in decreasing the massive amounts of water used for illegal purposes that are trafficked around our county on our county roads. Make no mistake, the predominant use of these water trucks are not being used for human or animal consumption, but rather for the wasteful extraction of water for illegal commercial cannabis activity in Siskiyou County. With over 80% of Siskiyou County in severe drought, the county has recognized the importance of establishing and implementing changes to the extracting and transporting of groundwater. After all, one of the most effective strategies for decreasing the illegal commercial cannabis activity is restricting the wasteful use of our precious water. As most people in Siskiyou County are aware, there are several areas of this county that are inundated with illegal commercial cannabis. Commercial activity is 100% prohibited in Siskiyou County. California state law allows a person to have six cannabis plants. Six plants or less is considered personal use cannabis. Anything over six plants is considered commercial cannabis and requires permits issued by the state, but only if the local jurisdictions authorize it. According to Siskiyou County Code section 10-15.020, commercial cannabis activity, whether or not for profit, is expressly prohibited in all zones in the unincorporated areas of Siskiyou County. This prohibition shall apply to all activities for which a state license is required. No person shall establish, operate, maintain, or allow commercial cannabis activity in the unincorporated area of the county. Therefore, anyone who is maintaining, allowing, operating, or has established commercial cannabis in the unincorporated areas of Siskiyou County is in violation of local ordinances. However, despite our local laws, commercial cannabis continues to flourish in Siskiyou County. The county departments, including the Sheriff's Office and Code Enforcement, are in an all-out effort to eradicate the ongoing problems, but the growing numbers have honestly made it very difficult to stay ahead of the problem. For years, the Sheriff's Office efforts were effective. In recent years, however, explosive growth of illegal activity has proven more challenging. Even more distressing is the unprecedented incidence of violent crime associated with growing cannabis. We have seen homicides, robberies, theft, assaults, domestic violence, environmental crimes, and other crimes against persons and animals. It is quite clear that these issues go well beyond just the cannabis itself. We have a tremendous problem involving the organized crime that continues to grow along with the cannabis, and it must end. Many people have expressed their opinions on how to fix the thousands of parcels with thousands of plants on each parcel. That is increasing violent crime, draining our water, and polluting our environment in Siskiyou County. We want you to know that we are listening and we continue to take your ideas into account. Over the years, we have pursued nearly all known available means to cope with the escalating problem. However, unfortunately, state politics seek to decriminalize all drug-related crimes and associated crimes, which stall our local efforts and harm our communities. The county continues to reach out to state and federal agencies to request help. However, the burden continues to remain at the local government level. Some people do not support the prohibition of commercial cannabis activity, but that opinion does not invalidate the fact that it is still illegal and not acceptable in the county. Also, let me make this clear. This issue has nothing to do with racism or targeting. Many of us often hear those claims and they are completely without merit. 
It is prohibited for anyone, regardless of gender, race, or ethnicity, to engage in commercial cannabis in Siskiyou County. In the last few days, I have heard many comments that Siskiyou County is targeting Asian Americans and racially profiling because we are enforcing these ordinances. In no way is the enforcement of these ordinances related to race. In no way do we condone racism, nor do we condone those who support racist views or ideologies. It is unfortunate this type of false and misleading rhetoric is being spread around the community. We believe these new ordinances will greatly impact our ability to eliminate these illegal activities and preserve groundwater for our entire community. Also, permits can be obtained free of charge by an individual if they can provide a valid, lawful reason to extract groundwater and transport from one location to another. I ask the local community to please stand with us and support our efforts in turning the tide in our mission to conserve groundwater, contend with the increasing significant drought, and defeat the environmentally toxic illegal commercial cannabis activity in Siskiyou County. This is a trying time for Siskiyou County, and we need everyone's support. The Siskiyou County Sheriff's Office and all the county departments are committed to making a measurable impact to protecting those we serve, our environment, and our quality of life. Thank you. Hello, Siskiyou County. I'm Shereen Strauss, and this is your news for the week of May 7, 2021. Up first, we have compiled a partial list of local farmer markets and their opening dates. McLeod Farmers Market, located on Main Street, opens May 30th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Mount Shasta Farmers Market, located on North Mount Shasta Boulevard, opens May 17th from 3.30 to 6 p.m. Weeds Farmers Market, located at the Bel Air Park on College Boulevard, opens June 3rd from 3.30 p.m. to 6 p.m. And Wairika Community Certified Farmers Market, located at the Siskiyou Golden Fairgrounds, opens June 2nd from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Siskiyou County Fire Department agencies, including CAL FIRE and Mountain Medics, have, have recently created the Siskiyou County Water Rescue Team. This team will respond anywhere in Siskiyou County, as well as the Castella area of Mount uh, Shasta County. California Service Area 3 has funded three water rescue boats and one ice rescue boat that will be stored around Siskiyou County for quick retrieval in an emergency. Fire Captain Casey Cohen of the Cal Fire Siskiyou unit says that there are an average of 15 to 20 water rescues each year. Many lakes and rivers in, in the county are a big draw for fishermen, kayakers, inner tubers, and swimmers. People have needed rescue while ice fishing and skating and skiing across Castle Lake in the winter and kayaking or jumping off the McLeod Falls is in the summer annually. Now all fire departments will be able to work together under the same guidelines and performance standards. Tyler Jones, a firefighter on the Weed City Fire Department says that having these skills will be a great asset for fire rescue. He advises people to always tell someone where you'll be when you're going to the river, wear your life jacket, and always go with a partner. News from Dunsmere. Newsflash, hurry! The deadline for the summer pool staff applications have been extended to today, Friday, the 7th at noon. The July 1st opening is contingent on securing eight qualified lifeguards. As of this date, only three job applicants have been received. Please note, the pool applicants must be prepared to attend a required lifeguard class Saturday and Sunday from eight, uh, excuse me, on May 8th and 9th, 15th and 16th from five to eight at the Weed Community Pool. The cost is $200. Applicants are still available at the Dunsmere and Mount Shasta Recreation Offices and Dunsmere High School. Please help the district to reopen the Dunsmere Community Pool. 
Former Siskiyou County resident, Dr. Thayan Seeley, is facilitating communication and communication styles workshop on Zoom, hosted by the Dunsmere Community Resource Center. This is a great opportunity to learn how to effectively communicate with your children, family, partner, co-workers, and anyone else you come in contact with. Communication skills help you solve problems, learn new things, and are the key to your success. Workshops start today, Friday, May 7th, and every Friday afterwards until June 11th from 4 to 5.15 p.m. To register for more information, please contact the Dunsmere Community Resource Center at 530-235-4400. 600 birds filled the historic Hotel Dunsmere 10 p.m. on April 26. The owner, Mark Juarez, along with a few of his associates, found 600 swift birds in the lobbies and hallway of the hotel. The birds came from through the chimney and because there was no screen or cap on it. Juarez said, quote, we were freaked, but by the end of the evening, we fell in love with the birds, quote. At first, they called the police, who Juarez claimed thought we were nuts. Eventually, Juarez and his friends captured each of the birds and carefully took them outside to set them free. The last time the Hotel Dunsmere used the chimney was in February. News from McLeod. On Sunday, a dirt devil gained enough momentum to cause a mini tornado on Broadway Avenue in McLeod, tearing off some of the newer roof on the Dance Country building. May is Poppy Month for Veterans. The red in the poppy flower signifies the bloodshed of the men and women that have sacrificed their lives for our country. In 1921, the American Legion Auxiliary started their mission to support the veterans through the American Legion by handing out poppies for donations throughout the month of May. Now, the only American Legion Auxiliary in Siskiyou County is located in McLeod. Auxiliary members will be handing out poppies in front of the McLeod Post Office and the market on Saturdays, Tuesdays, Tuesday mornings, and Wednesdays from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. There will also be containers at many of the businesses in McLeod for people to make donations. For more information and for the story behind it, go to the American Legion Auxiliary website at legion.org slash poppy day. Donations can be mailed to the American Legion Auxiliary at P.O. Box 601, McLeod, California, 96057, or call Liz Steele at 530-925-1537. News from Mount Shasta. The Mount Shasta Community Resource Center is offering an ongoing class, Parenting the Nurturing Way for Grandparents and Other Relative Caregivers, every Thursday on Zoom, from 10 to 11.30 a.m. The class provides up-to-date information and is designed to meet the needs of grandparents, relatives, and other caregivers who are parenting children. Recognized as one of the top parenting programs in the country, Nurturing Parenting is a group-based program with over 30 years of research designed to help develop caring and nurturing parenting skills. For more information or to enroll in the classes, please call the Mount Shasta Community Resource Center at 530-926-1400. News from Weed. 30 seniors attended the first senior luncheon program that started back up on Monday. Because of the COVID restrictions, They now hold two different lunches on Monday, limiting the number of people at each sitting. Four businesses, Ellie's, Mount Shasta Market, Casa Ramos, and the High Low rotate in catering the weekly lunches. The Family and Community Resource Center of Weed is offering its own ongoing nurturing parenting program for families on Wednesday evenings from 4.30 to 6 p.m. on Zoom. These 
our special virtual parenting education opportunities to provide support, connection to other families, and ideas to help you and children during the current situation. To register or for more information, call 530-938-9914. In other news, Crystal Geyser Roxanne is giving four $10,000 scholarships to four lucky winners who are graduating from Weed High School this year. These scholarships can be used by anyone who will be attending any college or vocational school. All interested seniors need to write an essay answering the question, how do you feel growing up in Siskiyou County will contribute to your success? Applications for the scholarships and job openings are available at Crystal Geyser Roxanne, 1400 Mary's Drive in Weed or call 530-938-1831. And finally, many businesses, excuse me, many business establishments in Siskiyou County are changing their hours and even closing their doors because they cannot find people to work. The current unemployment rate in Siskiyou County is at 9.7%, which is close to the highest in the nation. But that is expected to change in September when the federal unemployment insurance of $300 a week extra is going to end. Crystal Geyser, Roxanne and Weed is one of the biggest employers in Siskiyou County. They have sent out mailers to half the residents in the county in search of hiring people that will that they will train to work in their weed manufacturing plant. They offer many bonuses, including a thousand dollar sign up bonus after ninety days, paid health and dental benefits, a four hundred one k with a three percent match, paid holidays, vacation days, and so much more. Yet since March. They are still trying to fill the same 15 positions. They also have student summer programs. It is a good way to earn a new job skill or possibly a new career. You can pick up an application at Crystal Geyser Roxanne, 1400 Mary's Lit Drive in Weed or call 530-938-1831. News from Wairika. A GoFundMe account has been set up for Dustin Parks Jr., who was born on April 30th. The baby was transferred to UC Davis in Sacramento due to seizures following birth and was found to have a blood clot in his brain. According to an update, he may be diagnosed with cerebral palsy and be on medication for life. The family needs to be helped with expenses while staying in Sacramento, so if you can help, please donate. And if you can't, the family is asking for prayers. In other news, the Siskiyou Democrats are planning a COVID-19 safe drive through event to help supply our North County with food banks and to help raise awareness of food insecurity in our county. The event will be held on Saturday, May 15th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the COS Wairika campus in, in the Health Services parking lot. Requested donations include non-perishable food, diapers, baby food, and personal hygiene products. Cash donations will also be very welcome. The donations will be shared by two local North County food banks, the Siskiyou Community Food Bank and the Wairika Food Bank. For more information, Contact the Democrats at siskudems at gmail.com. News from Hornbrook. Hornbrook residents have been making a stink about their water. The issue is that their water really does stink. Resident Billy Stillman says that the water smells like rotten eggs and it is causing stress with the residents. Hornbrook's water district is volunteer based and recently the board has approved money for two new water tanks and a new well. The community is hoping that, the up, that updating the resources will help the water issue, though no timeline has been set or when it will be implemented.
News from Happy Camp. Having seen a news story about how Greg McDonald had the great idea to plant another shade tree at the Happy Camp High School, the Young family reached out to Hope for Happy Camp and asked if anyone would like more trees. It just so happened a local couple had asked Hope for Happy Camp earlier if they had any fruit trees for planting. The Young family was connected with these happy campers and then drove all the way up from Mount Shasta to drop off the trees. The Youngs wanted to let happy campers know how they, they feel bad about the Slater fire and that folks in Siskiyou County care about them and the challenges they are facing. Happy campers want to thank the Young family Kindred Farms in Weed for the beautiful fruit trees, as well as caring people of Siskiyou County. Hi guys, I'm Becca Rao from Siskiyou Reviews, and this week I want to tell you about a fun-filled cafe located right here in Siskiyou County, Bella Artworks. For those of you who haven't got to visit Bella Artworks yet, they are a fun mashup of a retro soda fountain and paint your own pottery studio. It is a family owned and operated business by three generations of women, Grandma Jackie Sanford, daughter Talia Nicholson, and granddaughter Nevada Nicholson. When Talia purchased Bella in 2016, it was an ice cream pottery and glass fusing that was offered at the cafe from former owners. But as the local community patrons of the former cafe started coming in and sat down at the counter, they would start reminiscing over the sandwich called the gooey they once enjoyed at the original soda fountain. So after some deliberation and some small changes, the Bella Grown Up Cheese menu was born, which offers a variety of grilled cheese sandwiches with a variety of ingredients that children and adults can enjoy. Over the years, the family has continued to add food, art, and entertainment options. The most recent addition is boba tea and smoothie bowls with a variety of healthy toppings. When the pandemic struck, it forced them to think outside the box, and so Bella started to even offer to-go art kits, and it still continues to be an option for those still wanting a less public interaction or experience. Those who are wanting to get out and make some plans, Bella is one-stop shop for parties. They offer party packages that include a variety of art experiences with ice cream and exclusive use of their private party rooms that can be theme decorated where party guests can come in and pick out some pottery or canvases to paint and have a fun time eating and painting. So the next time you're trying to figure out a place to take the kids for some fun that's temperature controlled on a hot day or a rainy day, or you're craving a grilled cheese or even loaded nachos and a boba tea, you've got to go check out Bella's for a fun family trip or just pop in for a quick lunch or you can order some fun crafts to go. Either way, they've got you covered. Bella is located in the heart of downtown Wairika right off Minor Street. I'll see you guys next week and don't forget to eat local.